some things are inherent, some things can be taught. So some people are born, let's say, with communication skills. You know, the, the intelligence, it can be broken down into seven different kinds of intelligence. There's musical intelligence, language intelligence, kinesthetic intelligence, cognitive intelligence, right? Musical, so like that, there are multiple intelligence theory. Some people are, let's say, born with the ability to speak. So that's an advantage. Some things are taught, like strategic decision making and other things. So there are leaders who are extroverts, the leaders who are introverts. The leaders who are good speakers, the leaders who are not good speakers. It's not about being a certain frame. We see politicians and leaders should be like that, not necessarily. There are many people who don't have a designation and they're leaders just by their quality. But leadership is about making other people feel safe. Very simply spoken. When people look up to you and say, he's there, I'm okay. He will help me out. He won't let me down. That is leadership. First of all, don't try to be a man. A lot of times I see women wanting to compete with men on their terms. Women have their own strength. Men have their own strength. So focus on the strength that you have as a woman. Your feminine qualities, your high EQ, your ability to manage, your ability to you know, uh, be likable, your ability to persuade, communication, you're far better. Statistics shows women are far better at these than men are. Men are logical thinking, more analytical, right? So focus on the gifts you have been given and use your strength to go to a point where your work speaks for itself. It is far more difficult as a woman to succeed. I understand that. Having said that, you know, my great-great-grandmother, Shimati Sarojini Naidu, 100 years ago, she married the person she loves, love marriage. 100 years ago, you can't understand what was it for her. Entire family in Dhaka and Calcutta rejected her. She went across the ocean to study. Apparently, you lose your religion when you do that. Back in the days, that was the idea. She did it anyway. She used to rub shoulders with people like Gandhi, men who are married to other women. And she being a married woman, she was there at the forefront. Again, lots of things were spoken about her character. She didn't care. She worked hard. She didn't listen to all that garbage and she just went on and on and on. And today we remember her 100 years later. Her great great grandson is talking about her to an audience who has never heard of her or seen her, right? That if she could have done it, so can any woman. It is harder. But take it as a challenge and do it. Make it the norm. I don't like Women's Day. Why should we celebrate Women's Day? We don't celebrate Men's Day. It is actually putting a woman down by saying you need a day for yourself if you talk about equality. So be the change you want to see in the world. Focus on your strengths, make decisions, let your merit speak for itself, not sympathy. How to make it right when you make a wrong decision? First of all, get out of the ego, right, like rightly said, acknowledge there's a problem. You know what, I messed up, own it. I messed up, I made a mistake. Now you're a human being. When you say I made a mistake, people understand, everybody makes mistakes. If you don't acknowledge, they'll be like, oh, see, he's a leader, oh, that's why he... But if you acknowledge, I screwed up because I was going through a difficult time or whatever it is, and this is how I'm gonna make it right. I'm gonna make up for it. I'm going to compensate it by doing blah, 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 right? So if somebody's complaining to a leader, sir, this was not the right thing, you listen. You acknowledge, you tell them, I have heard you, I think it's a blatant mistake, I'm gonna make it right, here are the things I'm gonna make sure that happens by this time. And you act on what you said. And thereby, damage control is done, acknowledgement is done, and when you come out victorious on the other side, they respect you and love you more. Because everybody makes mistakes, but not everybody owns it. But you owned it and you fixed it. The most demanding quality is to maintain a calm head. Because as a leader or as a follower, you are a human being. And there are constant influences, there's constant stress. But you can't make a decision as a leader when you are stressed out because your prefrontal cortex sh shuts down. So to keeping that thing open and knowing when you can't trust your mind, and knowing when you can, and deciding accordingly. That is the hardest part. Because sometimes under pressure, you can succumb and make a wrong decision. 
So hitting the pause button, is this the right time? Asking the question, am I in the right frame of mind? Am I most optimal? Am I too sleepless? Am I too depressed? Am I angry? Am I insulted? Or am I in a position to make a decision? Self-awareness and then making a decision. Time immemorial, that is the hardest part. Most of us can't do it because pride, because arrogance, because uh, you know, whatever influences us, mind being the worst enemy, telling us certain things. So the ability to separate yourself from your behavior, from your mind, observe yourself, understand yourself, and then based on that, act.